Welcome, 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 welcome to Christian Networking Entrepreneurs. Surprise, surprise, we are here in a new studio, and I'm really excited to be out and about without a mask on. So here we are after COVID. A few months ago, well, actually last month in May, we had our live event. Thank you all for attending. And today, we're actually back in the studio. We've been doing Zoom um, for the last year and a half, so it really feels good to be back in the studio. Welcome to Christian Networking Networking Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Pastor T, and Christian Networking Entrepreneurs is a platform for small business owners, emerging entrepreneurs, and community leaders. And today, I have a fabulous community leader that I've been knowing for almost 20 years. Oh, girl, you getting old. You getting old. Not me, not me. Oh, right. For over 20 years, and her name is Anita Bradley. Anita, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, and thanks for asking me. Yeah, yeah. So we know we tried it before, then we our wires got crossed, so yes. I'm glad that we're finally here today. So Anita Bradley is the executive director, I was about to say the CIO, because I'm the CIO, the chief inspirational officer, but she's the executive director of NORA. What does NORA stand for? Northern Ohio Recovery Association. All right. She's the executive director of Northern Ohio Recovery Association. And right now we're going to find out a little bit more about her. So as you all know, if you watch the show on a regular basis, we do something called ETR earn the right. So now she's going to tell us a little bit about her story, how she's earned the right to be the executive director. And you are the founder, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, yes, right? Yes. Yeah, I remember you founded this organization some quite some time ago. So that's amazing. So tell the viewing audience a little bit about yourself, your marriage, you got kids, <laughs> how you got started, oh, whatever you want to share. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you so much. So, oh, it's so exciting to be here. And um, I haven't had to share my story recently. I've been very isolated, you okay. know. And just, we all have. Yeah, taking care of myself and my family and, of course, the business. And so, um, I mean, I've been doing this work for actually, ooh, you said 20 years, 30 years working in the, in yeah. the field. And um, did not think I would be doing what I'm doing today. I actually... Um, came into the recovery field by way of my own personal addiction um, with crack cocaine, one of the 80s people, you know, that used, um, got caught up back when I was in college, went to Kent State, lost my dad and my uncle uh, very tragically in a boating accident and just started partying, you know, and um, just couldn't maintain, you know, eventually dropped out and, you know, came back to Cleveland, did all the stuff you hear about, even things that they're doing out there now that we look down on, you know, that was that was me doing that stuff and and probably more than, than most people. But um, the Lord got me together. I called on him one day and he heard my cry and um, and I, I got resaved because I was baptized as a little girl. And so um, 25 years old, precious, precious, you know, and just decided that I was going to follow him all the way till he's ready for me. Amen. Amen. Yep, yep. I mean, that's awesome. And I, I love to hear the recovery stories because you know, but I don't know if my viewing audience know, my husband is recovering and he's been sober, sober for over 30 years. Wow. And when we come down to Nora, we try to come down. I think it's been like the last five years we've I, come down there. And we appreciate you all so much. <laughs> yes, we appreciate your ministry. It's ironic that he is 30 years and I have 31 because for me, what that tells me is, is I mean, it's we think it's bad now but it was bad then too it was just you know these drugs cycle and we just have to always you know be on top of um you know educating our children and really just trying to create a good foundation so that if something happens to one of us we can we can be resilient and bounce back from that yeah that that's amazing but i love to hear the story so when we would come down for christmas and bless the ladies with gifts and my husband normally does a, like a little 15 minute sermonette and when we go to the recovery houses and we do that, the ladies are like on the edge of their seat listening to every word because first he comes in, he's Apostle Greg and he's the Apostle of New Beginnings Ministry. And then when he opens up his mouth and he shares the testimony that I am in recovery, yes. I have been recovering yes. for the last 
30 mm-hmm. years. And they they're, they just light up. Their mm-hmm. eyes look at him. It's mm-hmm. like, I'm a living, walking example that there is hope there and is it's hope. possible. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And so, yeah, because sometimes you look at people and you just don't know what's going on on the inside. And it takes people like him and like myself and others that are in recovery to reach back and to um, be that, that walking example of, of what it's like to be, I call it now, in the recovery culture. Amen. Because there's a drug culture, there's a recovery culture. And so, you know, helping people to make that transition, even through example, is a, is a wonderful thing. And so um, it's been 31 years. Life, life is good, you know. Um, married uh, to my husband, eight years. We had, Well, we have three children together. We both have been married before. And 26-year-old son, 22-year-old daughter, and we got a 14-year-old baby girl who grew up on me so fast. <laughs> like, whoa, when I <laughs> met her, she's a little girl. Go? Oh, my goodness. And so, um, you know, we're just doing what we do. Um, business is good. We've been hit with COVID, you know, like everyone else. Um, even my children's biological dad had, was very, very sick um, on Christmas Day, hospitalized for 30 days, and I praise the Lord. He made it through. Amen, amen. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. with that being said with COVID, how did COVID work in the recovery house? I mean, like you mentioned your husband, and I know that I have just recently seen, did he open up like a house for men or something like that? So I was going to share that with you. I was going to tell you, so when you all work with the ladies, tell your husband, now we have some men. Okay, so tell us about that. So it'd be great for him to, to, to meet with the men. Well, so, tell us about both of them, because my viewing audience, they don't know. I know. <laughs> So tell the viewing audience, one, about the Uh house that we normally come and visit. And then share with them, too, about the men's house and and how that works, how that whole process works. Okay. So um, historically, my experience Mm -hmm. had been with women and children, um, probably because of my uh, the things I went through as a young lady and was able to overcome them, was a foster care parent. And so we started out with a women's treatment facility with children. Okay. And so then, um, so we do the counseling. We have people come in like your um, church ministry ministry, and uh, minister to the ladies and make sure that they have clothes and food. And we appreciate you all so much oh, for that. It's our pleasure. Yes. We, we enjoy doing so it. We appreciate that. They are so appreciative, you mm-hmm. know. So when we come, they're, they're just so excited. And it's so funny, you know, a lot of times when we come, we have all the gifts. And they think some people are going to get gifts. They are so everybody, excited that everybody, everybody ex- and you get a gift, and you get a exactly, gift. It's just it's exactly. so, it's so fun. So that was historical, you know. And then we started working with children. Um, adolescent children, and then uh, recently, about two years ago, we we opened up our first men's house, and so that's Nora. What we, my husband, what you saw is mm-hmm. he, we had to move or get a refrigerator oh, okay, okay. <laughs> for the guys um, over the weekend. The refrigerator went out, and he, you know, I got him helping me a lot now because it's hard as a as a female trying to run an organization. You know the things that we need the males for. You know, lifting, and he, I mean, he just loves to do certain things. He's he has a background and construction and he loves to cook so I got him helping me with that um and then we we have a new house opening in um Maple Heights okay we just got the occupancy permit so we'll have Maple Heights will have um, the West Side location and the location near us. There's a house on that street. Okay, so great. we have those three locations, and so in there, you know, really, I just remember being in treatment, and there's a couple of things we talk about: the disease and the illness, and how it 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 affects people. Your your mentality, you know, the cravings, you know, the physical compulsion, <coughs> and um. We teach them about that, but most of all, I really like working with people like like you all that have um, compassion and that love people and love the Lord. Yeah. Because I think you have to, I think you have to have that. There's education is great, It's great when you have both. But there's nothing like the speaking from the heart. What's from the heart reaches the heart. Yeah. So yeah. when you when you talk about that, um, the education and the compassion and just being able to identify mm-hmm. with the population. So you mentioned our location. Tell us a little bit about your building. I remember it had to be. So it wasn't 2020 because we was in COVID 2020. So it had to be 2019. Wow. You guys had a ribbon cutting set- ceremony. Yes. You had a big building yes. dedication. Yes. This is a like a one point two five million dollar. Yes. So tell us about the building, where you're located, and okay. all about that. Hey, so we're located um, fourteen hundred East Fifty Fifth. It used to be the Goodrich Gannett Building. Um, we it's a long process what we went through. I was telling the the young man that's filming for us that my good friend um, Larice Purnell 
and Erie Bank, um, West Gillespie, and a young man named Alan Huff, who's in Columbus. We all worked really, really hard at trying to put it together. Um, we were able to get funding from the state to um, do the, well, Erie did the bridge loan, and so um, Alan and Larise kind of worked on the paperwork and things like that. And so um, we acquired the building to be able really to be pivotal to the community. And I've always said that I wanted to be an organization that reaches those that are hard to reach because people need to feel comfortable coming into a facility. And so everybody doesn't feel comfortable going to some, you know, I just say, I always say I use Cleveland Clinic, okay. <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing against Cleveland Clinic because I go there. But I'm saying some people want to go somewhere that's in their community, that's close to them, that they feel comfortable. And so we are we are that center. We are that center that is out there when people are sleeping. We're taking phone calls at night. You know, we're working on the weekends. And so we're trying to meet people where they are and not where so-called book says they need to be, but really what the illness looks like when it's at its worst. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because it's one thing, like you said, the book, to me, there's the theory, there's the practical. Correct. So in theory, mm -hmm. it's A, B, C, but in practical, right. it's E, F, G, A, C, D. It's, it's no, like, cookie cutter program. Mm -hmm. Everybody is individuals mm -hmm. and have to be treated as such. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so... You know, we sort of pride ourselves on that. So we have professionals. We also have what's called paraprofessionals. Our pair, our paraprofessionals are people that are in recovery that have lived experience. Man. Yeah, and so we, um, the state certifies them, and we hire them, and we allow them to follow um, individuals into the community. You know, again, where. Um, the relapse occurs is in the community. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're we're just, you know, we're all over. We do the food bank. Uh, last year we partnered with the Browns and gave away the 40,000 pounds of food on several occasions. And so you'd be surprised some of the things that families go through. I mean, mm -hmm. we gave away all that food. Yeah. And these were people that really, really needed it. Yeah. And yeah. so um, COVID really took a toll on everyone. And I'm glad that we were able to have that presence in the community and just people could pull up and get what they need and, and go on, you know, with their day. Yeah, that's good. And even now, I, if I'm not mistaken, I've seen something where you're doing the summer lunch program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so speak about that and how people can come up and get something from that. So so our USDA program, this is the second year, um, we give out breakfast and lunch on Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 to 12. Anyone can stop down. They can come by um, and get food for children uh, in the schools and um, or in the community centers, and, and we're there. We, you know, make sure the lunches are USDA approved and that they're healthy, nutritious stat snacks. And so we have a team that is willing to do that as well. And so, good, yeah. good. I, love, I mean, you guys are doing so much, and there's so many things that the community needs. Mm -hmm. It's so many things. So it's more than just the recovery. It's the supportive services mm -hmm. that goes along with the recovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think that's amazing. So let's talk about some of the services that you guys are offering right now to the community. Okay. I remember seeing something about a leadership training program. Who would be ideal for that? Okay, so okay, uh, so well, let me go back. So the leadership, I came up with this idea because, you know, oftentimes um, I've had, you know, certain things in the organization that was, um, can't think of the word right now, proprietary mm -hmm, material. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, you hire people, they leave, people want to start their own business, all this other stuff. So I decided that I wanted to do something and publish it. And not just to keep it, um, you know, uh, copyright on it, but also so that I could give back because I know for me when I started the company, you know, creating a board, being a leader, like, what is what is that? People say, I'm a leader. Well, I, am I really? I, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what, what that mm -hmm. means. What does that look like? Right. So I decided to try to put some definition behind it and to help uh, people that may be starting a church or a church board supporting people like yourself. A lot of times um, individuals in the church, they're, they're voted in. They're in leadership positions. They could be deacons, deaconess, all these, these other things. But do they really know what it means to support a pastor and a first lady? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about worrying about what other people have and what they're doing. And I'm be honest now, and it bothers me. Like, what difference does it make what the Lord has done for someone else? 
if you're going to be a part of someone's ministry, you are there to support that first lady and that pastor as best you can. And if you can't support them, zip it up, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know. And so um, people don't understand that in order for you, in order for me to have our ministries, that we have to pay people. We can get volunteers, but volunteers are only going to last so long before they start talking about what Anita's doing, but we're volunteering. And so we, you need funding. And so I have to just say it. You need funding behind you. You need support behind you. <laughs> and so my training is to teach people who really think they want to be on a board or some of the consumers <laughs> in the community that are in recovery I want them to go sit on the boards of these organizations, of these county boards that are funding people, on these state boards, talking to our legislators about recovery works, mental health recovery works, substance abuse recovery works, but also having the skill. So we talk about communication. You know, we talk about doing your homework, homework in terms of knowing the time to say what you need to say to 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 a legislator. You know, um, timing is everything. You know, if there's a big issue on the table, you know, we're going to be voting for a new congressperson. Have we done our research to see who these candidates are? Do these candidates support um, what's important to us? And so the leadership training is, is a skill-building tool for individuals that want to launch out but also to give them some things to think about so that when they approach the um, process that they know what to do. You know, yeah. the board development training part is about if you're on a board, you know, how do you communicate? You know, are you dominating the conversations? Are you taking, are you active on, you know, just, I all just go, yes, yes, all of that. We yes. go from A to Z. And that's good. We, that's so good. Because mm-hmm. um, I know one time you had came and spoke to our board for mm-hmm. us. So at New Beginnings Ministries, we have a board. And Anita was so gracious about three or four years ago just mm-hmm. to come and speak to our board and give us some pointers from the experience that you've had. Mm-hmm. So I just wrote down some nuggets of a lot of things <laughs> okay. you said. I'll so, get you a copy. I should have brought you a copy. Yeah, well, I'll Let come and get it because I thought it was so yeah, good. Yeah, I'll make sure you get one. Yeah. So in the skill build. You know, mm-hmm. there are skills that have to be built. So mm-hmm. even if you're a leader, there are skills that has to yes. be built. And I think that that's important because that's what we're going through right now. And that's my focus. So God has okay. shifted okay. me and I'm focusing on leaders and leadership training and okay. how to train leaders and all of that. So all of those things will come into play. And then you talked about being on a board and doing your homework. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. I call that doing your due diligence. Mm-hmm. There's a part mm-hmm. that you have to do. And if you're going to be a part of a legislative um, initiative, Correct. You need to know how that works. Yes. You just can't show up and be yes. like, wait a minute, wait, I got something to say. <laughs> exactly. I got something to say. No, exactly. see what had happened was that's that's not exactly. how it works. Exactly. So we do need the training so we can know how to do it. And I say that we're all a leader in some capacity, mm-hmm. right? So even if you're leading your children at home and you're a Absolutely. single mom, you're a leader. Mm-hmm. If you living and breathing, you leading you, or you yes. should be. Yes. You know, yes. so yes. that's, that's right. all a part of the whole leadership. So I think that that is amazing and that's good. So tell Tell us how that works. I know that it was like a six week or eight week. Tell us how those trainings so, work. So, so what we're do, we have to. Um, so for, we were funded by health. I was funded our organization by Health and Human Services um, to train two hundred consumers in the state in a three year period. So I have to do sixty seven a year. Um, I took my time to write. That wasn't a part of it to write the curriculum and to have it published. And so uh, we're in year two now. So first year, we did, I think we did about 70 people. We just kicked off year two. And so um, I did, we've done Cleveland. Next week, I go to Toledo, Akron. We're going to be going to Columbus, Cincinnati. And anyone else that says they want it, um, hopefully, I'm hoping that at some point, I will I know, I think I'll be doing Michigan. Okay. And so I'm hoping some of the surrounding states, but I'm just here to give out this information and try to share, you know, a few things mm-hmm. that, that I know. I'm not mm-hmm. one of those people that try to hold everything in. Oh, I don't want anybody to learn. No, I want you to learn because the more that I can give back to the community and teach them, then I know the Lord will find something else for of me to course. do so I can continue to elevate myself. I don't need to continue to Stay, stay stagnant the same. and hold yes. on everything and just get exactly. that. And then even when you say that, you know, as leaders and you, um, when you talked about being on volunteering or working for a church or ministry or mm-hmm. nonprofit or whatever, just understanding how to protect the vision of yes. that. Yes. So it's like if you are with a church, you so busy taking care of your vision mm-hmm. and tending 
to your vision? Well, I talk about that too. I talk about that. Look, I call it, I, I have to come down their streets on some, some certain people sometimes because, you know, you have to check your motives and not enter a board or whatever because it's something that you trying to accomplish. You need to make sure that you support the leadership. And I'm not saying that there's not things, some gratification, self-gratification that you can get from being on a board, but to come on a board and try to monopolize, that's that, that right there is very, uh, it's divisive. And I talk about that. I talk about finding the time to communicate and articulate what it is that is important to you. Is that a part of the plan, the strategic plan, and how do you, how do you maneuver through, the, through those things? And sometimes it's just better to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the leaders, and if the leader says it's something they support, then fine. And if it's something that they don't support, then you may need to find another way to get your needs met because a lot of times people do that too. Everybody thinks being a first lady is easy. They don't know about the calls that you all get on girl, the weekend in the middle. Girl, of the, they don't know anything me, about me, that. Me and my husband have this conversation all the time. People want to, they say they want to pastor and they really don't want to pastor. They want to preach. Okay. Mm -hmm. So to preach, that's just on Sunday or when they call you out, but to really be a pastor. So in us, we are, we are pastors. I'm a pastor. I'm part of the fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. I'm an ordained into the office of a pastor. Oh, okay. So in being a pastor is so much, like you said, the calls that you get late at night, going to the hospital, going to see about people mm -hmm. when people pass away, okay. that that's something that a preacher is not interested mm -hmm. in, but a pastor, your, your compassion is for the people. Mm -hmm. So just just like with your organization, your pa your passion is for those in recovery. Mm -hmm. And when yes. what you said about the vision, we talk about that in our organization and all of them. So I do this, the Christian Network of Entrepreneurs. I do the MCS Fund, and we do the ministry. So Look in that... We have a vision. And then people that you're working with, they may have a dream. So my thing is, does your dream fit into mm -hmm. our vision? Mm -hmm. Because if your dream fits into our vision while you're here, you should be learning something as well mm -hmm. that you can take and, and apply to and another area in your life. Yes. And that's, and that's great. And I tell people that all the time. I actually, um, so many times, like right now, I'm hiring a few people around me. They have ideas. I want you to learn the good, that all the good stuff I know, but I also want you to know about some of my pitfalls so you don't have to do that too, right? And so, you know, you take that and the goal is for all of us to grow, mm -hmm. for all of us to, to move forward. But while you're here with me, you know, if, if there's something else that you're doing, that's fine. But, you know, just kind of stay focused with the leaders because, you you know, I have um, one person. I feel like they, not one, it's probably more than that, but sometimes mm -hmm. you know when mm -hmm. people, I you know. feel like people mm -hmm. are pulling in a different mm -hmm. direction. And it and all it does is slows slows down the momentum of the work. It does. It really and then does. when you're doing that, my thing is be honest with yourself. Yes. Because there's only one head. If something has two heads, that's a monster. That's, yes. So if yes. this is one head and you're going to submit to that head, submit. Yes. If you find that you're in a, a, a predicament where you can't, it's probably better to leave. Yes. Because, like you said, it'll slow it down. Yes. If, if we row in the boat and we row in the boat and somebody else is backing up, y'all mm -hmm. y'all mm -hmm. impeding mm -hmm. our progress. Or swaying or whatever yeah. they're doing. So yeah. that, that's important. So I think that going through leadership training mm -hmm. will always help. Training is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. Going through board training, training as a board, if you're going to sit on a board, because one day you might have a board, mm -hmm. just knowing the ins and outs and how it works and how it navigates, Correct. right? Correct. Um, like in our board, we're um, incorporating the robber's Rule of order. Yes. Uh -huh. And that's just yes. like really funny, just trying to get that out. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, just the way you speak. So it's a language. It is. So, with that being said, with the two trainings that you offer, how does it work? Is there a fee? I know you're going all around and doing it. So, tell us if people are watching and are interested in being a part, how can they do that? Truth be told, they can, for, for the next. Well, in Ohio, the next two years, they can they can jump right into any training that we're having because it is it is free. Um, at some point, it probably won't be, but right now it's free. They can contact us at um, the fourteen hundred East Fifty Fifth. Our you know our number is two one six Nora, which is easy two one six 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 seven two, which is N O R A. But um, they can contact us. Look at the website. 
and register for one of, for one of the trainings and 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 come on in. You know, give them the website. The website is www.noraiinc.org. Norainc.org. Awesome, yes. awesome. So with those two trainings, the leadership training, the board training, I know when I seen that, I was like, oh, I want to do mm-hmm. something with this. And then by the time I circled back, mm-hmm. it was already in progress. Okay. So how many um, sessions is it, and all of that? So, so is it two? So it's two, two different. It's two, two different. Okay. Yes. So, so talk about. So <laughs> look. So at first, I started out. I had the merge, and I was trying. Was I trying to do it in eight hours? I was, yes, trying to do it in eight hours, and I realized it was too much material. So then I took the um, curriculum, and I broke them out, and I created the leadership for one day, and I created the um, board development. Of course, you, I probably could do you know, weeks of series, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. right now, it's a day, it's a day and a day. Okay. And I mean, I, to be honest, the manual, I don't even really cover everything in the manual because there's so much dialogue. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we talk about Robert's Rules of okay. Order in there. We talk about committees, being on a committee, governance committee, you know, all of that. What is What does that mean? You know, and, and if you're voted, you know, into a, a, a role on a board, you know, how do you conduct yourselves? We just, you know, communication, listening, you know, fundraising. We talk about it's all, it's all, yeah, it's in there. Good. That's so, yeah, awesome. It's in there. It's, awesome. And I mean, it's like, you know, some of it may be, um, what's the word, you know, repetitive mm-hmm. to some people. But for someone that's just trying to get out there, at least you have a blueprint. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's a blueprint that, for me, was created from right here, mm-hmm. you know, of some of the things that I went went through and you know, I talk about some of the some of the challenges. It's not easy um, being a business owner. You know, I've had um, had some struggles, and sometimes I'll be like, "Okay, Lord, you know, you want, you want me to do something different?" And he's not saying a word. He's like, "No, <laughs> stay the course." And guess what? I heard I was um, doing something, and I heard about maybe the Lord doesn't want you to move. Maybe He wants you to shift. Mm. And so my shift is. What we're doing yeah. here. My shift is educating. My that's the yes. shift. The business can still run, mm-hmm. but now I'm shifting to do some different things. And if I have the right people around me, I should be able to you do that. Should be. And that's so true. So it's like I always tell people you should have a mentor mm-hmm. and, and be a mentee. Yes. And then as things are going, as they're this called the changing of the guards. Mm-hmm. And the guards are constantly changing. Mm-hmm. So even though you've been doing this for thirty years, mm-hmm. think about how the face of it has changed, how you've changed. Mm-hmm. The Oh yeah, a lot, a lot uh, wiser. Not a business. I'm not a business major. I took um, so my major in undergrad was criminal justice. I was going to law school. Then I developed the addiction. Ended up going back for social work administration. So the uh, management of a nonprofit is a part of that that last year that I had. But a lot of my background is around. Uh, human services, people, social work, but also the business part. I learned what do they call it? Hard knocks. <laughs> <laughs> learned that hard knocks, and I'm still like I want to. Um, instead of like trying to get a PhD, I'd like to attend some of the Kellogg trainings and the Harvard. They have these tracks yeah. there, and just kind of go to some of those and sharpen mm-hmm. um, my skills and, and get stuff those like certificates because that. that's that's where it is right yeah, now. It's exactly. like you don't necessarily have to have the quote unquote degree. Yeah. And like you said, you you're doing it, and you never mm-hmm. even went to business school or mm-hmm. took up business. Mm-hmm. But some things is just your newer. innate ability. Yes. So when you have the innate ability to do something, and you are a child of God, mm-hmm. there you go. That's, all things yes, are possible. That is absolutely to him true. that believes. So, and it's not about you knowing. And everything is about you having the right people around you to get it done. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's that's what I've been, been doing. doing it that's for thirty been, years. That's right? what I've been so doing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing, and I love that. And it's like you know the whole success story from coming from recovery, being a part of recovery, to owning an organization that helps others get through that process as mm-hmm. well. That's amazing. Yeah, Absolutely amazing. Uh, Anything amazing. we need to talk about with the leadership or the boards before we go into the finance piece of it? Uh, not really. Okay. I think, I think we're good. Yeah, and I think that, you know, viewing audience, if you're interested in being a part of it, I know I am, and I'm going to um, in, um, encourage my board members to be a part of it as, as well. They always say, well, Teresa Pasatee will volunteer you to do this <laughs> or volunteer, and I do. I volunteer them <laughs> to do a lot of stuff. So if y'all watching, get ready. Look on the website. <laughs> we're going to be attending both of them, the leadership and the board training. And we're going to have fun, too. Yes, we have fun yes, there. yes, I'm awesome. 
I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. And then, you know, I just wrote a book about leadership, and I'll make sure you get that, too, as well. Awesome. But Look um, at let's, you. let's talk about the capital campaign. So uh, with the funding. So being a nonprofit organization, how are you funded? How do you stay afloat? How does this happen? It's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. So um, our very first piece of funding came from Department of Health and Human Services. It was a grant to do the recovery. Okay. We had to train 125 people in recovery uh, a year for four years. So we trained 500 people, and that was the foundation in which the organization was birthed okay and from there um we just started building blocks i kept looking at a person in recovery and all the brokenness mm -hmm. and it's just like a broken piece of just say a plate and what do you do with that plate you put the plate back together one piece at a time and that's what we do here at Nora. We put in, so now we put the housing in place and the education in place and the illness in place and the food in place and the disease in place and the permanent job. You know, are we trying to put help put them back based on who they are because everyone is different. And so um, I started just looking for different funding streams. So some of our funding comes from the federal government. Some comes from the state through our block grant and the Cuyahoga County Um just, just all these different places. I have not done a lot of fundraising. Okay. Not a lot of fundraising. I mean, we've done, we had gala some years ago. Mm -hmm. And then, I, to be honest, I got burned out doing that because it was like I was doing it. And so guess what? I just spoke to the gentleman that helped me with the building, Alan Huff. And he said, Anita, you need to do a capital campaign. Alan okay. is a retired um, CEO. Okay. And so um, a mentor. All right. Awesome. He, he said, Anita... And I was like, well, I've never done it before. He's like, Anita, you can raise a million dollars. I was like, he said, you've raised it. I said, really? He's like, yeah, you're just not looking at how you raise it. So um, he's coaching me Amen. and walking me through that process. And I'm I'm open for learning. So we probably be doing everything from spaghetti dinners to, <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, I'm looking for a, um, I forgot what they're called. The a uh, host, okay, uh, a celebrity host, a to, celebrity spokesperson, a celebrity right. spokesperson yeah. that may have a background with addiction or um, mental health to get behind us and to help us raise these funds so we can make sure that the that the residents have a nice, clean, vibrant place like this. Um, <laughs> beautiful. To, to yes, it's beautiful to reside, and so. Um, we're, you know, and we're going to probably have a performance. So there'll be a series of things that we do. We're just in the in the planning, planning stage. stage. Yes, yeah. there you go, planning yes. stage. And so um, I'm really, I'm excited about that. And so we're going to do, he calls it some kind of scan. So we're going to scan the organization, myself, to see what my capacities are, my board, you know, the staff. Mm -hmm. Because what happened with the... Um, Events we were having, like you asked staff to do an event, and they're like, listen, that's not a part of my job. So we have to be real careful with that. But And he was really clear. He said, Anita, I hope you know, and I hope your board knows that you can't do this and your job, too. You cannot. So I'm going to have to hire there you go. a person to come in and to help put that together. Mm -hmm. um, Loretta's helping me. My new assistant okay. is going to help me with that part. But someone else to drive, like, you know, all the different things we're going to be doing. So my goal is to kick it off soon, but to end, um, I'm hoping to end in two years, which will be closing out in December is our anniversary. Mm -hmm. So in two years, we'll be closing out 19 years, getting ready to go in to 20 awesome. and i'm hoping to close it out then and have a big gala as an ending mm -hmm. part but between spaghetti dinners fish dinners you know raffle i don't know so a all little bit just kind of creative every, things all yeah. kinds of things and that's what you want to do just all kind of creative stuff so for the, for the okay. viewing audience that doesn't know a capital campaign is when you go out to raise a certain dollar amount and when you're doing a capital campaign it's all different things that is attached to mm -hmm. a capital campaign so for instance you like she said they have a two-year span that's the planning span for the capital campaign and then you'll do all kind of fundraisers, all kind of events. Mm -hmm. You'll do a call to action asking people to donate. You'll do pledges asking people to pledge certain dollar amount. Um, a lot of the people that have come through the organization, yes. you can even go to them for a small dollar amount, yes. but a dollar amount. So let's say with the capital campaign, all the people that are in recovery, if everybody who has been through this program, if y'all can um, pledge $50, Correct. we would appreciate that $50. Yes. Some people can write a check, boom, $50. Somebody 
somebody say, you know what? I'm going to write you $500. Mm-hmm. Other people will be making, I'm going to pay you um, um, five, ten dollars a week <laughs> yes. for the next five weeks mm-hmm. to get there. Why? Because I believe in the cause. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I know what it did for me. And then that's when you pull on the heartstrings of people knowing that I know this works. Mm-hmm. I know that they need this money so they can continue to do these works. Mm-hmm. So that's amazing. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Thank and you. you need that. And it's like I love what you said. And I think people need to know this: that when you have a position. You can't move out of your position to do something else. Mm -hmm. That's when you have to bring people alongside you to help see Mm -hmm. the vision come Mm -hmm. to pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another expert in that area. Yeah. Because that's not my area. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just little things and people don't even know how much things cost. So if when you're doing a campaign, you have to purchase a mailing list. Exactly. A mailing list costs. Exactly. Then you have to pay for somebody. Stamps. The Girl, stamps to don't go with get it. Me the envelopes to go with it. The printing that goes with those. I can go on and on. You know, the designer that needs to you get paid. Should. Okay, right? <laughs> Somebody not- to collect the, the envelopes to open them up, to log it in, to book it, to take the money to the bank. All of that. that it's a and lot, that, isn't it? It is. And people don't don't know that. It's like you just look at this one thing and you don't know all the pieces and all the parts that goes with it. And I love like going back to the leadership. I always tell people there's something called 360 degrees of leadership and then 360 degrees of leader you as the executive director you have this whole pie and you have to look at this whole pie mm-hmm. and make sure this pie is functioning the way that it needs to function yes and then they have you have the employee piece you have the education piece yes. you have the housing piece yes. have, so the housing don't have a clue about what's going on over exactly. here in the market exactly right but they I just know that. that in this housing we need this and we need it now yes. but you don't understand that the transportation needs some new wheels on the yes. tires and that's a priority yes. before the housing get the walls painted the walls are fine exactly exactly or the walls can wait right <laughs> <laughs> you know to some funding someone donate some paint or something right and that's exactly that's exactly exactly what it is and it's it's juggling that and and not to mention you know dealing with this for all these years and then all of a sudden what happened here come COVID here come, you know I, and I'm sitting there looking like are they serious and then when they start talking about staying in the house putting on our how mask, does that work locking, for you guys lock, I mean because you you have normally I know when we would visit if I'm not mistaken it was like two ladies in a room mm-hmm. and how did that work so, well, luckily, praise God, that we had um, received funding in 209 and 213 for something called telehealth. So we were one wow. of the first organizations in the country to do counseling online. And a lot. And at first I didn't like it because it was like, you know what, you know, you people need to touch and feel and see like, like we're mm-hmm, sitting mm-hmm. here. Well, I'm glad that we put the infrastructure in place and that we had the electronic health records and all that kind of stuff. So um, when it came, we had to shift gears. We started, our counselors started seeing clients because they were in the house together, they were sort of quarantined together. And so they would be in the house and we would set, just like we set up here, the TV's here, and they would talk to their counselor and get what they need. We made sure that the food was there. We couldn't shut our group homes down. And I'm grateful for the state because they understood, they gave us supplies. We had plenty of sanitizer. We had masks. We had, um, I'm trying to think. No, none of our clients, no. Well, I will say one of our clients did get COVID. Okay. But in the women's house, none of them got it because they are more restrictive. One of the men, because he was, men's house was more transient, in and out. One guy got it. We had to have one bedroom that nobody was in unless they had COVID. Okay. So when the guy got COVID, he went into the one bedroom. We had to give him his food. He had to see, he had to stay, stay in there. there for that and he was days. in denial. And we was like, you stay in there. Are you going to lose your spot? We hired a professional to come in and sanitize our we building. Did, and that's so costly. Yes, we it did was. That for the church. Yes, it was yeah. several times. Yeah. And even, you know, we had to install the um, camera when you come in for the temperature. First, we started with the hand temperature. Mm-hmm. Then we had to get the machine put in so that when you, I still go in checking my temperature mm-hmm. every, every single mm-hmm. day. And and so um, it just, it worked. And then, you know, we thought it was getting better. We opened up a little bit. And next thing you know, you got a staff person. My nurse had COVID. And so luckily they weren't, you know, they weren't severe. Severe cases. Yeah, they yeah. weren't severe cases. Um, and I mean, to be honest, my colleague 
in Michigan, he lost three of his staff. Wow. And they lost 20 people in the recovery community. Wow. Yeah. And, and it was a, like a group of guys used to play dominoes. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those guys got, it, got ill. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It was, COVID is real. It's and, real. And it's very this serious. It's conspiracy theory, people. I'm like, yeah. what are you tripping on? This is real. <laughs> right. You better, better. You probably got mask, some background stuff. Get your too, vaccine yeah. and put your mask on. Yeah. You know? Totally vaccinated. Especially, you know, being, I, we tell our, our community that vaccination is a choice. That's your own personal choice. But for me as a leader, I had to be vaccinated. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. my husband was vaccinated. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to be that example because I'm dealing with the public too much. Exactly. In my Put day job, I'm still room. servicing clients mm-hmm. three days a week, mm-hmm. and then I'm in the church. It was just too much. It okay. was too much. Okay. Yeah. So that that's cool. So one thing I know I want to talk about is the correlation between drug addiction and mental health. Okay. What are some of the research that you've seen, or what are some of the things that have come out mm-hmm. as it relates to that? Very uh, tricky situation. Um, there is a correlation. For some. Okay. Yeah, there's a correlation for some. Uh, we started out strictly with addiction. Okay. And um, that was because that, for me, that's what it was. Um, no, no, I n- never suffered from mental health. You know, uh, maybe some, we call it situational depression. If somebody passed away, a divorce or something, you go through it, you come out. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But real clinical depression and mental health is um, it's ongoing for a period of time based on certain symptoms. Okay. And so, um, but for some people, you know, what's unfortunate is, is it's and it's, it makes it so complicated because you have um, individuals that may have a mental health disorder and they use to deal with the symptoms of the mental health disorder. Okay. And then you have some people that use and as a result of using when the, the the drug is removed, they're suffering because they don't have the chemical or their, their body's chemistry is changed. And so it's just, it's just, you never know. So what we recommend is that if a person gets clean long enough, we'll be able to determine what's what? what's, what's mm-hmm. what. We may not ever know, like, which came first if they have a co-occurring disorder. But that's one of the things that prompted me to want to get um, our agency certified to do mental health because I've seen a couple of clients come through and I felt as if we um, weren't able to service them well. And sometimes um, clients want to be treated where they are as opposed to we're going to do the addiction over here and you go over to Metro or somewhere else for your mental health. I want my counselors to be able to recognize people to have both and for us to be able to serve both. We may not be experts, which is why we partner with other organizations, but I am hiring. Um, we're creating what's called an ACT team to do like home in-home therapy and stuff like that for people that have co-occurring. Wow. Yeah. So they can come to their house and yes. give them their treatment and yes. their counseling. Yes, we can go to the homes. And I mean, now that you know COVID is subsiding, um, I think I think it's okay. But in home, or they come to us. Mm-hmm. But but there are models where you can meet people where they are. Mm-hmm. You know, you meet them out at McDonald's or whatever. Mm-hmm. Because again, a lot of people just don't want to come to. Inst- we're not an institution, mm-hmm. but right. it may feel like an institution to someone that's been in an institution, okay. and that's not the aura that we want to give out at Nora. We want them to feel, you know, comfortable. I think people do because they see all the other stuff that that we that, that we do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, it's a beautiful facility, and I love like Thank when you go into you. different rooms, the different colors, and yeah. the different things on the wall. I mean, they have the really cute chairs, just the different colors and stuff. I like. This I, like I mean, I, it's, it's really beautiful when you guys had your grand open and ribbon cutting ceremony and I was able to I'm attend so glad that. You came. It was just amazing. I'm like, wow, look at this from a little bitty office to mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, God is good. Yes. And if you stay the course, this mm-hmm. is what can happen. And I know it's not easy. Take work, takes work, takes <laughs> it work. It does. And mm-hmm. you have to be committed to mm-hmm. the work at hand. So when you said that about the people going to the people, explain to me two things. The acts and how the paraprofessionals help with the mental health. So okay, so um the professionals are the education they have certain degrees of education, bachelor's level, master's level. PhD level, medical doctors, nurses. So um, they're certified and licensed through the state of Ohio with different backgrounds, whether it's counseling, social work, or chemical dependency. Um, Medical doctors may have a specialty in addiction, just like a nurse may have a specialty. And so those are the professionals, and um, 
the clinical, that's the clinical side. The clinical side is to deal with the disorder that's very structured. You know, it's very um, time limited. You, you know, and, and when I say time limited, I mean typically it doesn't go on for periods of years, maybe four months, five months. Then people usually kind of work through whatever the uh, issue is and they move on. The paraprofessional, which is the recovery coaches that we have, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, which is sort of new, but we worked really hard for about 20 years to get that into play. Um, one of the concerns I had behind that movement was that you have the clinical side, and so we treat people in acute care settings and send them home, and they relapse because they're going most of the time right back to where they came from. You know, and four months is not a long time when you're up against 20 years of a culture, a using culture. And so um, we came up with something called these recovery coaches. Recovery coach can be with a person forever. You know, um, it depends if they're working for a center uh, I don't think the state has a mandate on how long the duration. I know you can only have 20 people on your case. But what they do is, you know, like, I don't know if you saw, like, sometimes we get tickets for the Browns or the Cavaliers. We take our um, clients out because they need to learn that, again, you got a using culture, you got a sober culture. And this culture, this is what we do to take away from all of that obsession of thinking and trying to um, reminisce on your on your using behavior. But there's a whole boatload of things that you can do in the world and in the community that's fun, that's natural, <laughs> um, you know, in terms of living your best life without drugs and alcohol. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So, and I love the whole fact that the paraprofessionals, so when you were talking, my, my, thought, my thought was going, when you talked about the ACTS, mm-hmm. so explain that a little so more. So the ACT team, the ACT team is, um, it's a mental health term. Okay. And so it's a team to, uh, with three people. There's a case manager, there's a counselor, and then there's a person that deals with the med- medical aspect to monitor, like the medication. So that's for a person that has co-occurring disorder. So the three, the three on the team they are assigned a pool of clients and they work specifically with those clients as a team and so making sure that uh, case manager making sure the housing and the job and, uh, and the insurance is in place the counselor making sure that they're you know where they are with their thinking right mm-hmm. and then the medical person on that team is making sure that they're taking medications and kind of monitoring that to um, you know, if there's something that needs to be tweaked, because some people do need medication oh, yeah. in and, order for, yeah. and then um, knowing how to navigate through the medication is if it's too high, if it's ex- too low, exactly. If it's, you know, to have it changed and tweaked and stuff like that. Exactly. So the acts and the paraprofessionals, those are two different streams. Two different streams. Okay. Yes. Okay. I was just trying two to figure out streams. because I know you said with the paraprofessionals, they can do something and get certified. Mm-hmm. So their life experiences is is, is their their education there's a there's a test now okay there's a training it's a 40 hour training so you take the 40 hour well first before that you do something online okay so you take it's called e-based academy you take a little test online pass that part then you go into the classroom for 40 hours a whole week you do that part get the certification then you go to the state and you take you take your test and you can become a certified recovery coach Wow, yeah, I yeah, love that. Yeah, and I think that, coach. you know, I'm sure that there's people out here, just from some of my clients that are in recovery, and they always say that they want to give back. I think this will be an amazing way mm-hmm. for them to give back absolutely. to the community. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So it takes, okay, is how, I mean, I'm not a whole dollar amount, but I know there's money involved. How how can somebody go through this and ideally I want to say, let me think cost. about that okay. because... I think the state does it for free. Okay, awesome. Yeah, they do. Awesome. And I so and and I could probably you just let me know if mm-hmm. you want to partner or if, or if I have one because because there are I'm trying to think I think there there's a refresher one coming okay. up real soon but that's uh, after the fact so I mean intermittently I think they're doing them online now okay. too. I think they're free. Good. I, I want to say they're good, free. I think I, they're I free. I hear a lot of people saying, I want to give back. This is yeah. my testimony, and this is what I've done. Right. And how can I give back to the community? And I think that this is an amazing way that somebody mm-hmm. who is Get in recovery. Get the certification. Yeah. Get the certification. Because I know in your ministry, you see people coming through with all kinds of things yes. going on. It'd be yes. nice to have a couple yeah, of people in would. the church that are certified. Yeah, it mm-hmm. really would. I think that that's amazing. Wow, so much information to digest. I think we got like 10 more minutes. So what would you like to share with the viewing audience for this last 10 minutes? Wow. Um, Basically, you know, just um, 
for, for my organization personally, you know, to um, we always are looking for volunteers okay. to come out. You know, when we have the food pantry, if they're able to go to the website, uh, www.noraink.org. And uh, there's a little tab in the corner where you can send some information and say that you're interested in, in, in um, helping out. So giving out food is a big help, especially when we have a lot. Um, volunteering, um, you know, just to come in and speak to the women like you you all, you know, maybe sponsor a food day. Um, we haven't been accepting as many clothes okay. lately as we used to. Or, you know, just anything creative a person can, can think of. You know, always, of course, monetary donations are are helpful because our funding usually is directly tied to something. Right. And it's not like, so for instance, um, let me think of something we may need. Okay, for instance, I bought a cake today. Bought a cake for East Cleveland children because we're doing prevention. That is something that has to be paid for. We I paid. It was $70. Okay. So, you know, I had to pay for that. And so just trying to get reimbursed for people, you know, to have no idea. Grants are not going to pay for food. They won't, that, they won't pay for food. Let's talk about that a little bit because 10 minutes they is not, a long time. We still got 10 minutes. They're not going to pay for food. So let's talk about that for a minute because I think people don't understand that when you get grants and money, that is earmarked for a certain thing and a certain thing only. Yes, it is. So if this money is earmarked for, let's say, rent. Right. That's the only thing the only you can thing you spend can, that money for. Unless, yes, it's a million dollars. But if it ain't going towards rent purposes, I can't do that because when the checks and balances come into play, I can't slash sister so and so. No. Twenty dollars no, for doing no. something and take it out. Just and that's why that. you, you hear about people on the news because they sliding and doing all kinds of stuff. Absolutely, before anything is funded, the budget is written, and the budget and the narrative of what you're gonna do with it marries each other. And the only way it can become unmarried or divorced <laughs> is if you do no seriously a budget revision. Yeah. And so um, with a budget revision, you know you can move, and then you have to read and see what's allowable and what's not. And you're absolutely right because I've had um, that to happen. People, oh, well, the organization got one point two million dollars over, but it's over a period of time, so that means it's three hundred a year. But in that three hundred is five staff rent. Lights, gas, insurance, health care, you know, all this mm -hmm. stuff. And it's, and it's certainly not for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's certainly not for me. And so, um, yeah, people get confused. Is And so, you know, and taking the money is serious, too. And that's one of it the is. things... One of the things um, years ago, and I'll just be real transparent about it. One of the we had um, some uh, bookkeeping issues. Paper, if your paperwork don't flow, now... You can look and see, they, they could tell, oh, well, they spent the money on this because you got, you know, mm -hmm. we know that you went here or did mm -hmm. this, but where's your paperwork at? And so even then, you know, if your paperwork is not, that's a deficiency. It is. And so, and so cleaning up those deficiencies is very, very important. And being a leader, like for me, it, it, was, a, it was a problem because I was so focused on trying to help the people. The work. And, yes. But I needed to be able to have someone in the back office that's making sure. Yeah. And you need people in that office making sure everything is aligned. That is an art that is a service. Those are things that people that want to give back, that's a great way to give mm -hmm. back. And that's what being on a board is about, making sure that you're looking at what you need to look at to make sure that that organization functions appropriately. And sometimes leaders need to be told, you need to fix this area or, you mm -hmm. know, or take mm -hmm. a look at this take area. Take a look at that. And I'd rather a board member tell me. Then somebody from the IT <laughs> Action News coming in there <laughs> exactly. saying, okay, this, this, exactly. that, and the other. I, I didn't get the call, but someone I know got a call from uh, one. I won't say who it was, but one of the guys <laughs> saying, well, do you know anything about this? And they was like, no. And so somebody probably had called. Sometimes when you terminate people, mm -hmm. people yeah, will say they'll anything. Tell it all then. Yeah, they'll yeah, tell, yeah. yeah, even what they think they know. And then I, but just the <laughs> need. So the, the need. So the need is volunteers. The need is people that can help. The need is board members and knowing that there's something called in kind services. Right. Yes, so let's yes. talk about that. I love it. Okay. So <laughs> in kind services, we have actually have two grants right now that has a it's called a match too. Okay. So the match, so for instance, if they give me a hundred thousand, they say you need fifty percent match, I gotta find fifty thousand dollars. Now that fifty thousand dollars could be this microphone, this chair, 
but this chair is worth three hundred. So now I still need forty, what forty nine thousand mm-hmm. seven hundred dollars, mm-hmm. right? And so um, labor is a part of a match and in kind, and it could help the organization. So, and that's a good way to approach a foundation and say, well, I can come up with twenty five, but I really need fifty. Can you match my fifty? Um, my in kind is twenty five, and I need another twenty five. So um, there's just so many ways to do it. But when you have the um, compassion and, you know, you're focused on the right things, you keep the Lord in front of you always and, you know, make him first and make your work first. And and mostly for me is, is it be about the person and not necessarily about me um, being a mother um, us moms always, you know, make sure everything is okay. I'm learning to do better with myself mm-hmm. and, you know, put myself first. But um, but that's helpful. Yeah. You know, even taking care of myself is helpful because now, again, I've got so many things kind of moving. But there's so many ways to give back. And, and I would suggest giving back in a way that's going to be easy for you, something that you can do, and really something that you love doing. And you do because it doesn't feel like work then. Yeah, it, doesn't, then it doesn't. And it's yeah. something that you love to do. So I had mentioned the in kind services because somebody can come and and if you like to clean, you can come and clean up for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. If you like to make something, you can do. If you want to make a cake, baskets. so whatever it is that yes, baskets all kind of Christmas, stuff. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. Christmas baskets, Listen. raffle baskets. Yes. If it's something, so to me, that's how you create a win win situation. Mm-hmm. So if you're watching and you want to help Nora in any capacity. Capacity, give them a call, yes. um, email um, Anita, and she will de- direct you to what needs to be done. If you want to take part of their training, if you want to help with the capital campaign, if you want to volunteer your services, whether you're a graphic arts designer, whether you're a printer, whether you want to donate some stamps, all there's nothing too small that cannot help the cause. Okay. Nothing too small You're that cannot help right. the cause. Absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely. So we got like three minutes to close <laughs> out. So give them all your contact information okay. again. And okay. then. Thank you. So uh, again, Anita Bradley, thank you all so much for um, just listening. And thank you for having me My here. Um, I am at 1400 East 55th, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. Our number is 216-391-6672, and the website is www.noraic.org, norainc.org. All right. Yes, thank you so thank much. You. And thank you guys for um, watching today. I hope you learned something today. If you know somebody that's in recovery, share the replay with them. I think it'll be encouraging to anybody that's watching or even somebody that's thinking about you have an ideal about an organization. This is a living example of what can be done 30 years in and still going strong. And God's hand is all over it. I am your host, <laughs> Pastor T. This is Christian Networking Entrepreneurs. We appreciate you tuning and in our viewing audience is emerging entrepreneurs small business owners and community leaders and remember if you don't network you don't work (laughs) have a great day see you next time with pastor shalanda every first thursday at 12 noon bye